That's when the tribe stepped in. All of them. Mrs. Peterson asked the whole class if they'd help raise money for the motor. Everyone cheered. It was unanimous. They would. For the next few weeks, all of the moms made cakes and cookies and sold them at bake sales. Our dads sponsored car washes. All of us junkyard kids used things we had gotten from Mrs. Mr. Beaches and made gadgets to sell. By that spring, we had enough money to buy that perfect motor. The next thing to do was set a date for launch. We wanted everyone in school to see it. That's when Gibby thought of the school science fair. Perfect, Jody said. He had started missing a lot of school, not feeling well. When he was there, Ray Van was at his side. Sometimes she even helped him climb the stairs. We could launch it from the school roof, and it would fly right over the field where the fair is, the class cheered. Maybe, Mrs. Peterson said, but wait, this magnificent airship has to have a name. Everyone started calling out names like Fabulous Flyer and Windy Wings. Jody stood up. He sure looked pale. I think she needs to be called the Junkyard Wonder because we made it out of junk and because we, Junkyard Wonders, made it. That plane is us. It was just a week later when Mrs. Peterson was late. She was never late. Her eyes were red and she looked sad. Please sit down. I have some very bad news. There was silence. We have lost Jody Beach. He passed away last night in his sleep. Then she put her face in her hands and cried. How? I managed to sputter. Ravan and I held hands. Jody had a disease that made his body grow faster than it should. It just kept growing and growing so fast that his dear heart couldn't keep up. It just gave out, Mrs. Peterson answered. Later that day, the whole class went to the woods behind the school to collect flowers and to remember Jody. Now I know what the plane has to be called, a voice called out. At first, we couldn't figure out who was talking. Then, to our shock, we realized it was Ravan. None of us knew she could talk. He wanted it to be called the Junkyard Wonder. That's what it has to be. Tears rolled down her cheeks. All of us agreed. Gibby's dad mounted the motor on the machine and placed it on a table at the back of his workshop. When we saw it, we all gathered around. It was so beautiful. We tried it out, more than once, from the hill in back of Gibby's house. It seemed to work, but would it work from the roof of the school on fair day? And would we even get a chance to try? The stairway to the roof was always locked. Maybe Mr. Weeks, the janitor, could help us get to the roof. I think he will. Mrs. Peterson said, but it will have to be a secret. The day before the fair, we could hardly contain ourselves. Would newspapers be there? Scientists from a nearby, nearby university? We huddled together out on the playground, chattering about our plans for the launch. Cheese it. Look who's listening, Tom warned. It was Barton Poole. He'd heard everything. He leaned in to Gibby's face. Your dad wears skirts. Then he sneered, and no one's allowed on the school roof. You got it? No one. And I'm telling the principal about your stupid plans. And sure enough, when we got back to our schoolroom, the principal was waiting for us, and Barton Poole was with him. I have been informed of your plans for the science fair, Mrs. Peterson. There will be no launching from the school roof and no fuel-driven airplanes anywhere on the school grounds. It could be very dangerous. Mr. Weeks will keep your plane in the janitorial closet until the end of the school year. The principal turned on his heel and left the room. Mr. Weeks looked very sad as he carried the wonder out of the room. Sorry, kids, he said. We were stunned. Revan started crying. This was going to be for Jody, she whispered. Mrs. Peterson said nothing for a time. Then she began. We are going to launch the wonder tomorrow just as we planned, and from the roof. Mrs. Peterson told us to be at Mr. Weeks's closet tomorrow morning, the morning of the fair. Our secret weapon turned out to be Mr. McDonald, Gibby's dad. If Mr. McDonald stayed with us during the launch, the principal was okay with it. We couldn't believe the good news. Mr. Weeks handed the wonder to Gibby's dad. Let's take her up, he said to us. 
On the roof, we could see kids pouring onto the field to look at science exhibits that were being set up. Ravan pulled gorgeous silk streamers that she had hand-painted out of a bag and let them stay rolled up at the edge of the roof. Then, with Tom's help, Gibby and his dad put the wonder in place. They carefully connected the engine to a car battery, then primed the pump to deliver the fuel from the tin sitting next to it into the, in the engine. Then they pumped the fuel into the plane. We all stood back and watched. Maybe it'll go all the way to Lansing, I speculated. Maybe even to Detroit, Tom said. Maybe around the world, Revan whispered. No, Gibby said with a grin. This baby is going all the way to the moon. When the whole school assembled on the field, Mrs. Peterson signaled Gibby's dad to begin the countdown to start the engine. Mr. McDonald knelt in front of it while Gibby held the plane still spinning the propeller over and over again. But the engine didn't catch on. We held our breaths. Pump the intake again, Mr. McDonald said to Gibby. He asked some of the boys to hold on to the wonder. And if you have to let it go at just the right moment, and you have to let it go at just the right moment, or it will bank left or right, understand? He spun the propeller a few more times, and then, with a loud bang and a roar, the propeller started spinning blue smoke puffed out. Someone in the field yelled and everybody looked up at the roof. That was when Ravan unfurled her banners down the side of the building. Almost to speed, Gibby's dad hollered. Ten, nine, eight. When he got to one, Mr. McDonald hollered, let her go. The junkyard wonder shot out of everybody's hands. It was airborne. First, it went out over the field. Then, as suddenly as it started, it sputtered and seemed to stall. Then the engine roared to life again with a noise that was deafening. The wonder's nose pointed straight up, up and up, straight toward the sun. We all ran to the wall of the roof and watched breathlessly as it streaked through the cloud cover, then appeared above, ever skyward, straight to the stratosphere. We all watched until it became a speck in the sky. Then we couldn't see it anymore. Even though the science department from the local university was there, along with the school board and the newspapers, for all of us, it was only Mrs. Peterson that mattered. And Jody. Tears glistened in Mrs. Peterson's eyes as she watched the wonder climb into the heavens. Like I said, Gibby whispered, that baby is going straight to the moon. Mrs. Peterson has always been with me all these years. So have all those in my tribe. Tom went on to become the artistic director of the American Ballet Theater Company in New York. Ray Van became a textile designer and was eventually invited to Paris to design for the fashion industry. As for Giddy, Gibby, well, he went on to become an aeronautical engineer for NASA. He helped design the lunar modules for the Apollo missions. And me? I became a creator of books for children. For all of us, Mrs. Peterson was the wind beneath our wings. She was the alpha of our tri tribe. She was our compass. I saw Gibby in Houston a few years ago. We spent the afternoon recalling our time together in the junkyard and how Mrs. Peterson helped us believe in ourselves. Then Gibby's eyes misted it over. He le leaned in to me and grinned as he said, Remember that photo that my dad took of all of us that day on the roof? after we launched the wonder? Well, Patricia, I stowed that photo aboard the lunar module on Apollo 11. All of us wonders really did make it to the moon after all. I just think it's a powerful story. Everyone is made different. God has made us all different. We all have different gifts. Some may think Others are strange, that they're different, like they did in this book. But look at what they have done. Think about all of the amazing things that all five of these kids grew up to be. Except for Jody. And hopefully he's up in heaven. Hope you're enjoying Patricia Plaka books. You can always get some more from the library. <laughs>